I talked about the Debbie Collier case a bit here in the past. There's a playlist here. I think you all know, if you've seen them, what I think may have happened in this case. And I'm probably going to put this video on members only after the final press conference. You will see why in the middle of it. Which, by the way, that press conference, I don't understand the delay. Like, the indications are this could have been wrapped up over two weeks ago now. And that they had taken steps towards moving to a conclusion. I think the police department is embarrassed, and so they should be. They were whining about people giving out about them online, saying that, oh, they're all nice people. I'm sure they are. I'm sure they're lovely. But are you good at your job? Did you take this investigation down a road that you now have to do a full 180 on? Did you clean up the crime scene properly? Did you make sure that the, the crime scene was cleaned up properly? Did you have a competent press conference? The answer to the last two questions is no. And that's more important to me than if you're a nice person or not, considering the job that you're doing. And I get why they're embarrassed. I would be too. But bite the bullet, admit your mistakes and move on. What they should have done is when Delphi investigators announced a press conference for Monday on a Friday, they should have done the same. Announced a press conference on a Monday, it would have gotten buried in the news, you would have saved some of your blushes. But maybe, to be fair, they just don't have some final reports back, which could be true. But this case is very sad, and it's now turning into a family drama. I don't like it, I don't really want to talk about it. Jeffrey, Debbie's son, he thinks Amanda did it. He said that to Amanda's face. He isn't happy with the sheriff there. The sheriff was laughing at him on the phone unintentionally. The sheriff came out afterwards and said that this is something he does when he's uncomfortable and triggered. But that's a bad thing to happen if you're in that position. Jeffrey doesn't like that this investigation has turned away from Amanda. And like us all, when we heard that press conference, that it was deliberate and it was personal and it was a homicide, we all believed them. We all believed the police. Jeffrey, no different. He's also grieving the loss of his mother. And I do, I feel bad for him. He doesn't get on with Amanda. He doesn't get on with Amanda's boyfriend, Andrew. They don't get on with him. And one of the leaks that came out that was reported on was that they got Debbie's phone records. And it turns out, as well as the Venmo that Debbie sent to Amanda, she sent a text to Jeffrey saying, I love you. But that text didn't go through. And we all kind of wondered why. Was it a network issue or something? However, Andrew and Amanda have insinuated that, and it does make sense, that the reason it didn't go through was because Jeffrey had his mother's number blocked on his phone at that time. And that's roughing him. I'm, I'm sure whatever the disagreement was, it feels like nothing now. And none of it ever really mattered anyway. But it also might speak to some reasons around why maybe Debbie was having a rough time. Amanda has now spoke out on her cousin's podcast, which I think was a terrible idea. Like the pros of promoting the podcast, and it has worked. This is a small channel. I watched some of their stuff a few weeks back. I think there was two or three hundred subs. And I was laughing actually because they were saying they were recording the podcast in the house together but they were in separate rooms and that might sound weird to you but if you've ever been in that position you know it can be true because that way you're more focused on the voice and the conversation rather than the person but now the podcast probably has well over a thousand subs the hosts they were on core tv last night so i assume they got a huge push off that at amanda's expense really the cons do not outweigh the pros here for Amanda. If you watch the full hour and a half, you might, you might come away with a better understanding of Amanda as a person. But most people won't. They'll watch short videos calling out red flags. Amanda is a disaster in front of the camera. She's nervous. She's shifty. And to be honest, I personally have pulled way back from reading too much into body language. Like I did in the past because... I've been wrong. I've seen so many other people being wrong. And I think a lot of us, myself included, not that we think we're experts, we just think we're better than the average person. And I think we get a bit too carried away with it. I talked a few times about the Cleo Smith case in Australia and seen the online reaction to her dad. That was a huge wake-up call for me. 
But whatever about body language, Amanda kept getting her days mixed up, which is a disaster when you have people online reading into everything. The hosts didn't correct her, which they should have. There is one thing though, Amanda said she didn't speak to Debbie on the Saturday. I had to go back and watch it again because she was getting her days confused. So initially I was like, did she mean Sunday? But when you watch it, you will see. No, she's clearly talking about Saturday. Here's the clip. But no, I, I didn't speak on the phone with my mother at all on Saturday. Um, we had exchanged some texts prior that day. Um, but I, I, I didn't speak to her on the phone at all that day. So she said she sent texts. But the police told us there was a call at 11.50. And also, I actually asked Andrew, Amanda's boyfriend, about this a few weeks back. I knew Andrew was lurking around YouTube channels and I put up a community post that I knew would get his attention. It worked. We had a little chat. I asked him about that call. No, I don't have the actual screenshot of his full answer because I think a lot of people started to comment back to Andrew. And when I woke up, he deleted all his comments. I was able to screenshot it from my notifications, but it doesn't have the actual answer in here. If anyone does, can you send it back to me? But I remember what it said. I posted about it also afterwards on my members tab. Andrew said there was nothing unusual about the call. He said Amanda was telling Debbie about jobs she was applying for or a job interview or something like that. I'm not sure which one, whether it was jobs she was applying for or whether it was about going for a job interview. So I'm very confused by Amanda's answer. Because the police have told us there was a call. Andrew, your boyfriend, told me about that call. And now you're saying there was no call, there was only a few texts. I wish she was checked on it and a few other things at the time. But to be honest, I've looked at this every way possible. I don't think Amanda and Andrew had anything to do with this. It just doesn't fit. And it doesn't matter how confused I am or anyone else is confused by... Amanda saying there wasn't a call, but police said there was. They have Amanda's phone. They know the phone records. They have Debbie's phone. They know every detail about it. And they're not looking at Amanda anymore, it seems. They have released the Venmo money back to Amanda, as there's no criminal charges around that. So that tell, that says a lot. I don't know why there is discrepancies around that call. Was it a call? Was it a text? Was Amanda confused? Did someone use call when they should have said no, it was a text? Whatever it was, this is an easy one for police. The phone records won't lie. I hope this family drama doesn't escalate anymore online. And I feel bad for everyone involved. They are all grieving the loss of someone they loved. And we all do it in a different way, but take into social media to complain about your siblings and going on your cousin's podcast. It's... Probably not the best idea for anyone involved. I hope the police have this press conference very soon and I hope this is wrapped up. Good luck. God bless. I hope everyone has a nice day.